The tactile and real-world experiences that physical computing offers, including microbits, Arduino, LilyPad, Raspberry Pi and several others, makes it really fascinating to students. They can use sensors to feed information from their environment to a computer, and they can build code that will react to environmental change. This video explores several different types of sensors and explains how they work, and then how computers handle their output. Examples of sensors in this video are shown as pictures and the electrical symbol that represents them. Now I'll split this video into three, each of which should be about five minutes, looking at how sensors work, looking at some examples of sensors, and then looking at how the computer deals with the information that the sensor is providing. Sensors take environmental changes and convert them to an electrical signal. If we want to understand sensors, then we need to have a little bit of electrical background. Let's start with voltage. Voltage is a measure of how much electrical potential energy that a charge is given, in this instance by a battery. This potential energy won't really do anything, that's what potential means, unless the charge has the ability to flow through a complete circuit. The charge will use up some of this energy as it flows through the circuit, because the lamp presents a resistance to the charge's progress. When the charge pushes through, some of the electrical energy is converted to heat energy and light energy. Therefore, there will be a drop in voltage because it's lost energy across the lamp. And the more resistance, the more the voltage drops. Lots of things use electricity, so in electronics we can represent anything that presents a constant resistance to electricity as a rectangular block, and anything that presents a variable resistance as a rectangular block with an arrow through or over it. You may also see a resistance represented by a wiggly line. A lot of commonly used sensors are variable resistors where their resistance changes with some other physical property. And as we've seen, their resistance will result in a voltage drop. And as the resistance changes, the voltage drop changes. So we can measure that physical property by measuring the voltage. A microcontroller such as a microbit can supply electricity, giving the charges three volts of energy and we can measure the voltage by looking at the value on pin 0. So we connect the 3 volts to the variable resistor and then connect that to the pin number 0 and we can read the value. And we do that using a piece of code. As the resistance changes the number on pin 0 will change. So we can read the number on the analog pin 0 and show it. Now some sensors can supply electricity giving the charges energy and we can measure this by looking at the value on pin 0 compared to ground because the device itself is supplying energy now the micro bit or the other microcontroller isn't. The code will be exactly the same um, because we're still measuring the value on pin 0. So what sort of environmental changes can sensors convert to an electrical signal? We'll look at quite a few of these in the second video in this series, but for now let's look at a simple example, rotation. The more the centre spindle of the potentiometer is turned, the more resistance the charges experience. You may be familiar with these devices as volume controls, light dimmers or games joysticks where up and down are controlled by one potentiometer and left and right by another. The relationship between the angle of rotation and voltage also means that we could use these things to sense what angle a robot arm was at. In sensors too, we're going to start to look at all sorts of other sensors 
and how they work and how we might be able to use them.